a very good morning dear students so children today we will do the last chapter of our english reader book which starts entitled memories of childhood memories of childhood as a chapter that is written in two separate parts each part has a distinct story to share with us so children both the parts have further been written by two different writers right two writers have written this lesson and they have written their own part the first writer named zit kala sa and second named bama so you would see that the chapter memories of childhood has been divided into two parts first part is the cutting of my long hair and this is written by zit kala sa and second part entitled we two are human beings and that is written by bama right so before starting with the reading of the story i would like to tell you some of the facts so children this unit presents the autobiographical episodes from the lives of two women who belonged to marginalized communities Uh, i hope uh, you know something about marginalized communities marginalized people are those people who have always been oppressed by the higher class people the rich class people the powerful people right they are marginalized they are considered inferior they are not treated in a good manner and they are looked upon by the people of higher castes right so the story that the stories i would say that are presented in this chapter memories of childhood both those stories are based on the poor treatment of the marginalized women who look back to their childhood days right zit kala sa and bama both these women they look back to their childhood days and you know they reflect on their relationship with the mainstream culture mainstream culture is the culture that the uh, you know the upper class people follow that many of the people follow who consider others as marginalized who consider others as you know lower than themselves so you know the first account is by american indian women right american indian woman she was born in the late 19th century and the second bama bama you know she was uh, uh, i would say tamil dalit writer tamil right so like both these women you know they have narrated their childhood incidents zit kala sa and bama right so let's begin reading with the first part of the story that is the cutting of my long hair by zit kala sa so the cutting of my long hair is a story that represents how marginalized females were treated in fact how they are being treated in the world around like wherever their condition is not known to the people wherever they don't know their actual rights wherever they are unaware of their rights that are given to them right so see the cutting of my long hair the first day in the land of apples was a bitter cold one you know the story told by zit kala sa that it was her first day in the land of apples it means she must have gone to some other place from her homeland right so land of apples of course it would be a mountain area and it was bitter cold it was too much cold there right for the snow still covered the ground and the trees were bare the large bell rang for breakfast its loud metallic voice crashing through the belfry overhead you know belfry a large bell is placed especially it seems that it is the story of a female who has shifted to a girls hostel right so see the writer says that it was bitter cold and uh, how she can say that for the snow because because the snow still covered the ground and the trees were bare right 
so a large bell rang for the breakfast it means uh, especially in hostels nobody comes to inform uh, you know uh, the people that the breakfast is ready so there is a bell it signifies that the breakfast is ready and the students can go to the mess and take their breakfast right a large bell rang and you know it was so loud its loud metallic voice crashing through the belfry overhead you know the belfry a structure is there uh, you may say a rectangle shaped structure is there in which a bell is placed on a higher platform so that is called belfry right it's overhead and into our sensitive ears zit kala saher says that the bell was so loud children you will be finding several symbols in this chapter see the belfry overhead crashing into the belfry overhead it means wherever the place was from where the bell was rang so you know that bell it crashed the belfry overhead and it crashed the sensitive ears of zit kala sa and her companion in the hostel right so sensitive ears it means it was so loud this is the first symbol used by sorry second symbol used by zit kala sa first symbol was bitterly cold place we often use uh, the phrase cold for cold behavior cold behavior cold attitude or uh, the place which is unfamiliar which is uh, you know not attached uh, that that something that is detached right so first symbol was the land was bitterly cold second was that the bell was very much loud you know it signifies that the writer zit kala sa must be a soft hearted person she must be a soft hearted girl right so see further she says that what happened after the bell rang the annoying clatter of shoes you know the noise created annoying means something that disturbs the mind the annoying clatter of shoes on bare floors gave us no peace it means they were disturbed by the continuous voice of shoes on the bare floors right when of course the people begin to run as soon as the bell rings as soon as the bell for breakfast rings people begin to run to the canteen or mess right the constant clash of harsh noises with an undercurrent of many voices murmuring an unknown tongue you know constant clash of harsh noises harsh noises means in which there was no sympathy you know with an undercurrent of many voices murmuring means you know talking talking in a slow manner in an unknown tongue means in an unknown language you know when somebody goes for higher studies and stays in a hostel a variety of people are there and they all belong to different different places and they speak their own languages right so it made a bed lamp within which i was securely tied you know that made a bed lamp in which zit kala sa was securely taking rest in fact she describes her position as she was tied it means she was not happy there she was not there by her own will right and though my spirit tore itself in struggling for its lost freedom all was useless of course she was not there by her own will that's why she writes that ki do her spirit tore itself in struggling for its lost freedom she feels that after coming to the hostel she has lost her freedom her spirit has lost its freedom and whatever was happening was useless she cannot do anything to regain her freedom back of course everybody wants freedom everybody loves freedom so they want to be free they want to act free but here the writer says that after coming to the hostel her spirit had become confined it is struggling but that struggling is useless why useless because she cannot do anything she is helpless there she cannot do anything uh, to regain her freedom right next paragraph a pale face woman next character a pale face a woman who looks very weak who look whose face is pale yellowish color right with white hair 
came up after us. After us means maybe Zidkala sir and her roommate. We were placed in line of girls who were marching into the dining room. You know, the girls were going into the dining room in order to take their breakfast, and they were in lines. These were Indian girls in stiff shoes, you know, tight shoes, and closely clinging dresses. You know, the Indian girls were there in line, wearing tight shoes and tight dresses, skin tight dresses, right? The small girls wore sleeved aprons, you know, frock type clothes, sleeved aprons with sleeves. and shingled hair you know shingled hair is a very important phrase for this chapter the entire chapter see the cutting of my long hair is you know shingled hair is the base for the further events of the story shingled means cut short very short right so the small girls who were wearing aprons so their hair were shingled right As I walked noiselessly in my soft moccasins, moccasins, you know, cutely, uh, you know, cute shoes uh, that are very much comfortable in wearing. So Zidkala Sai is comparing each and everything, her clothing, her shoes with the girls there in the hostel. You know, the Indian girls were there who were wearing tight shoes. Those may be uncomfortable with heels, but she was wearing flat shoes. right mukesh's flat shoes that were very cute and comfortable as well right i feel like sinking to the floor for my blanket had been stripped from my shoulders right she felt like sinking to the floor she was going down it means mentally she was feeling that uh, she is going down she is feeling depressed so for no reason for my blanket had been stripped from my shoulders because somebody had taken away her blanket from her shoulders right i looked hard at the indian girls who seemed not to care that they were even more immodestly dressed than i in their tightly fitting clothes you know you may feel that zitkala sa is a narrow minded person you know the writer actually she is comparing her dressing with the dressing style of those indian girls you know she feels that they were more immodestly dressed it means she considers her dress as appropriate and modest she feels that the dresses those indian girls were wearing were immodest those dresses were bold right since they were very tightly fit right next line while we marched in the boys entered at an opposite door so it was a combined mess and the boys also entered i watched for the three young braves who came in our party you know in our party means zitkala saab was new to the hostel and three young boys she notices were also new to the hostel right i spied them you know in the rear ranks rear you know looking back she began to watch those boys because you know we often watch those people whom we feel that like in a group of people or in a crowd that these are the familiar people or these are from the same background or if we are fresher in a college or a school and they are also freshers so we feel like a bit friendly with them so that kalas us looked at them looking as uncomfortable as i felt it means zit kala felt that they were also uncomfortable right a small bell was tapped and each of the pupils you know each of the students drew a chair from under the table see children many of the rules are there in the hostels which the students are supposed to follow a small bell was rung and you know each of the students they took away their chair from under the table you know discipline is to be followed like at the first bell the students have to come out the come out of their rooms after getting ready right so then the bell is for taking their chairs out of uh, like as they were placed under the tables see supposing this act meant that they were to be seated i pulled out mine and at once slipped into from one side but when i turned my head i saw that i was the only one seated and all the rest at our table remained standing just as i begin to rise looking shyly around to see how chairs were to be used a second bell was sounded all were seated at last and i had to crawl back to my chair again 
I heard a man's voice at the end of the hall and I looked around to see him. But all the others hung their heads over their plates. As I glanced at the long chain of tables, I caught the eyes of a pale-faced woman upon me. Immediately, I dropped my eyes, wondering why I was so keenly watched by the strange woman. The man ceased his mutterings. Mutterings means whatever he was speaking. And then a third bell was taped. Everyone picked up his knife and fork and began eating. I began crying instead. For by this time, I was afraid to venture anything more. So, uh, do you understand, children, what has happened till now? Zitkala saw when she entered the hostel mess, the second bell was there. Right, first bell was for the information that the breakfast is ready. Students can come to the canteen, to the dining room. Right. So, second bell when it rang, Zitkala obviously felt that this bell should be for the beginning of the breakfast. You know, when we are new to a place, we don't know its rules and regulations, especially when those are not taught to us, when those are not informed to us properly. So, Zitkala sat on her chair since she thought that second bell is meant for seating themselves and starting breakfast nobody sat and she felt so embarrassed so ashamed at the situation that she is unaware of the rules and everybody else was standing right so she felt a lot of embarrassment there then what happened then a third bell was there and at that third bell everybody took their seats and she also stood up after she saw that everybody was standing and when the third bell rang everyone began to take their seats and you know Zitkala all of a sudden feels that that pale faced woman uh, the one who was mentioned in the beginning of second paragraph that woman was looking at Zitkala Sa in a strange manner you know Zitkala felt uh, afraid at this time a bit afraid a bit nervous right the third when the third bell was taped everyone picked his knife and fork and they begin taking breakfast you know what Zitkala did she began to cry instead of taking breakfast right because she has she has now uh, you know be, she has now been feeling afraid to take any risk to take any further risk because like she was unaware of the rules and she uh, was going in the opposite direction I would say. Like when everybody was standing she sat on the chair. When she got up everybody got sat down and then she seated herself. You know awkward things were happening. Since that's not a big issue but you know at a tender age at the age of especially 17, 18 and 19 years. So children have uh, you know so many ego clashes they have uh, their prestige issues especially when they feel that they are going in a different direction as compared to their classmates or their age mates so Zitkala felt ashamed as she feels that nobody sat when the second bell rang and she alone sat everybody would be thinking bad about her everybody would be talking about her so such issues are very common at the age of 16, 17 or 18 right so, I hope that's clear to all of you till now. See what happens next. But this eating by formula was not the hardest trial in that first day. Late in the morning, my friend Judwin gave me a terrible warning. Judwin knew a few words of English and she had overheard the pale-faced woman talk about cutting our long heavy hair. I would again read this line. Judwin knew a few words of English and Judwin had overheard the pale-faced woman talk about cutting her long heavy hair. So, writer's friend was also there in the hostel. Her name was Judwin. Our mothers had taught us that only unskilled warriors who were captured had their hair shingled by the enemy. Shingled, you know, cut. Among our people, short hair was worn by mourners and shingled hair by cowards. A very devastating situation for Zitkala Sa. You know, she tells further in the story that it was, you know, the breakfast time was not the hardest time. Hardest means the, you know, toughest time. She tells us that 
the breakfast incident was not the worst incident of the day because the worst was yet to come and what was yet to come you know late in the morning zitkala met her friend judwin judwin told her that she had heard the pale face women you know that old women may be a kind of maid in the hostel that she had heard that pale face women talking that these new girls have come up with long hair you know zitkala obviously she was having long heavy hair and she loved her hair moreover you know in those times or in the minds of such sensitive girl it was uh, frog by her mother that only unskilled warriors unskilled warriors means those who have lost uh, in war right those who have not won the war those people are captured and their hair are cut by the enemies we we have seen such things in the movies as well so among their people you know short hair was worn by mourners mourners you know uh, when the husband of a woman dies often her hair are cut so i would not say her hair are cut her hair were cut in the past now these things have changed a lot but see zitkala was living in the age when the custom was quite prevalent so among their people short hair was worn by females who who have lost their husbands and shingled hair means very cut short very uh, you know shortly trimmed hair were worn by warriors only so she felt that this is very much unjustified right so why the people uh, are cutting our long hair this is not their right like it is our decision whether to keep long or short hair but you know as she has seen that most of the girls there or all the old girls there have shingled hair so she begin to get the hint that her hair would also be cut by that pale face women forcefully right so see uh, if that pale face women get successful in her venture or not right next paragraph we discussed our fate fate destiny kismat we discussed our fate some moments and when judwin said we have to submit because they are strong i rebelled no i'll not submit i'll struggle first i answered i watched my chance and when no one noticed i disappeared i crept up the stairs you know creeping means going or walking stealthily so that no one can notice i crept up the stairs as quietly as i could in my squeaking shoes my moccasins had been exchanged for shoes along the hall i passed without knowing like whether i was going turning aside to an open door i found a large room with three white beds in it the windows were covered with dark green curtains which made the room very dim thank thankful to no one was there i directed my steps toward the corner farthest from the door on my hands and knees i crawled under the bed and handled myself in the dark corner you know the incident that she has described can very well be noticed from this picture only when judwin zitkala sa's friend told her that they don't have any option as she says we have to submit it means they were those people those pale face people or the hostel authorities they are strong and the girls are weak since there is no one to help them out there in the hostel so that's why she tells zitkala that we have to submit because there is no one for us for our help and zitkala you know she was not ready to submit she said i rebelled it means she rebelled and she thought that she will not submit she will struggle you know if even if we feel that something wrong is going to happen and we also have that knowledge that the opposite party is strong and we will be defeated but zitkala sa was one of those people who don't take you know everything for granted she feels that even if those people are strong she will fight for herself she will 
take her wings so here she says that i will struggle first it means she decides to struggle first she decides that she will not allow them to cut her long hair so i watched my chance means she feels that she should look for a chance to run away from the place when nobody was noticing she disappeared from the place and she crept up the stairs means she uh, walks up the stairs she climbs the stairs stealthily walking very slow you know her shoes were ex exchanged with somebody uh, her moccasins those were exchanged with somebody right and uh, you know along the hall uh, i like she passed nobody noticed her but you know the hostel is not a big place so let's see if somebody is able to find her or not you know turning aside to the open door what she found that large room was there with three white beds and uh, you know the windows were covered with dark green curtains it means the room was very dim uh, there was no not much ventilation in the room and she thanked god that nobody was there in the room and she felt very much safe right so she uh, uh, headed towards directed my steps means she walked towards the darkest corner of that room and uh, like uh, on uh, her hands and knees she crawled under the bed so that if anybody enters to find her they may not be able to find her and cut her long hair right you know like children whenever their mothers run after them in order to beat them for any kind of mischief they have made they often go under bed right so nowadays we don't have uh, such kinds of beds uh, in our homes like everybody is uh, you know prone to the box beds nowadays otherwise in the previous times right in our times the beds were like uh, one could go under the bed and hide oneself so same kind right so see she hid herself under the bed and there was complete darkness in the room right and huddled myself in the dark corner it means she hid herself in the dark corner right i hope this is also clear next paragraph from my hiding place i peered out shuddering with fear whenever i heard footsteps nearby you know from her hiding place she looked out she was shuddering with fear means she was feeling very much afraid whenever she felt some footsteps because people were going to their rooms coming out of their room somebody who you know was going for a bath somebody for some other works so that's why she heard footsteps whenever people you know go from one room to the other passing the room in which she was hiding she felt afraid right she felt that the pale face woman has come to cut her hair but she was safe till now see what happens next though in the hall loud voices were calling my name and i knew that even judwin was searching for me i didn't open my mouth to answer you know she heard that announcements were made for uh, you know calling her name that zitkala saw report at the reception zitkala saw report at the ground floor but she did not respond she knew that the announcements as judwin had given her the hint already that the announcements were made in order to curb her and cut her long hair so she she also knew that even her friend judwin was looking for her but she didn't open her mouth to answer because she felt that judwin can submit but she is rebellious right then the steps were quickened and the voices became excited the sounds came nearer and nearer women and girls entered the room you know she didn't open her mouth but those steps become fast and her, their voices become very much excited as they have found her the sounds as they came nearer the women and the girls who were trying to follow her they had finally entered the room in which she was hiding you know what the person does whenever he or she feels that they are being caught i held my breath and watched them Uh, open uh, closed doors and peep behind large trunks you know the peep behind means look behind she held her breath you know people held people hold their breath whenever they don't want to show their presence because breathing also produce a bit of sound that's why 
she held her breath and watched that they were looking for zitkala sa peeping behind the large trunks that where she is hiding everybody had you know got uh, the news by this time that zitkala sa had run away from the dining room and she must be hiding somewhere so next line someone threw up the curtains you know i told you that the curtains were drawn and uh, like easily uh, there was uh, like that much darkness in the room that the, nobody would be able to look for anyone so someone threw up the curtains and the room was filled with sudden light obviously when the curtains are thrown up light entered the room next what caused them to stoop and look under the bed i don't know you know she was not expecting that they will look under the bed means you know such a matured girl can hide herself under the bed so how can it occur to their mind she said that she doesn't know how the people got this much memory that they should look under the bed i remember being dragged out you know drag dragged out ghasitna so she remembers that how she was dragged out though i resisted by kicking and scratching wildly you know she was scratching you know like scratching them with uh, her nails right she scratched them wildly she resisted means she denied it by giving them kicks blows in spite of myself i was carried downstairs and tied fast in a chair you know what they did they forcefully took her from that room and like in spite of all the efforts of kicking you know bouncing them scratching them in a wild manner protesting in all the possible manners zitkala was zitkala sa was very much reluctant to get her long hair cut but finally the people take him downstairs and you know they tied her in the chair with ropes right see next last paragraph i cried aloud shaking my head all the while until i felt the cold blades of the scissors against my neck and heard them gnaw off one of my thick braids then i lost my spirit you know losing one's spirit means a lot she says then i lost my spirit right lost my spirit her spirit had already lost its i would say freedom wings you know she says heard them gnaw off gnaw off means bite off one of my thick braids braids you know tail pony right then i lost my spirit you know along with her cutting of long hair she lost her spirit she lost confidence she cried a lot she shook her head you know as children move their head a lot when they are uh, taken to uh, when they are taken for a haircut they move their head a lot many times right they don't feel un- they don't feel comfortable while the cutting of their head so exactly like a child she struggled a lot right until she felt that the blades of the scissors against her neck until she felt that her hairs are cut nothing can be done now there is no use of crying shouting protesting so she feels that she has lost herself right so her hair have been finally cut since the day i was taken from my mother i had suffered extreme indignities indignities lo- loss of respect so see zitkala shares that <coughs> since that day she had been taken from her mother it means uh, from the day of separation from her mother she has been suffering uh, loss of respect she has not been happy she has been degraded by the outside world means she felt she must have felt very much protective uh, while with her mother people had stared at me i had been tossed about in the air like a wooden puppet and now my long hair was shingled like a coward's in my anguish anguish you know uh, anguish means uh, that helpless state that sad uh, situation i moaned for my mother cried cried for her mother but no one came to comfort me not a soul reasoned quietly with me as my own mother used to do for now i was only one of many little animals driven by a herder you know herder often drive their sheep right so 
it is explained in the last paragraph that she lost her spirit she lost confidence because she feels that from that day when she was you know entered hostel or whenever she had gone in the outside world without her mother so people have looked down upon her she has suffered a lot she has been taken as a wooden puppet with uh, which everybody used to play and now she her hair have been cut right in this sad situation in this anguish pain right in this pain she cried for her mother but nobody came to comfort her nobody came to talk to her or help her right or do a bit of talk with her not a soul reason quietly with her it means nobody came to her nobody gave her reason that why her long hair have been cut you know as our mothers always comfort us like in whatsoever situation they are they always comfort us right so zitkala also mentions that her mother used to comfort her in every situation so now she feels herself as one of the little animals driven by herder she feels that wherever fate is taking her she has to go right it means her life is being controlled by other people she has no control no hold on her own life right animals live like this only whosoever like uh, has seen that you know cows buffaloes etc sheep or goat like uh, animals like this are often captured by people and they are not able to live their life in a free manner of course they are fed well in the homes but they are captured for the i would say for the benefit of human beings and they don't have their own life they don't have their freedom they are driven by the herders they are driven their life is driven by other people and see how painful it is when a uh, person when a female compares herself to that of an animal who has no freedom in life right so this was all about part 1 the cutting of my long hair so i hope you must have understood the lesson and have enjoyed the text and children in the next part of uh, the video of the same chapter we would be doing uh, we two are human beings by bama right okay thank you